Today, my best friend and I are here in Cherokee, North Carolina at the Museum of the Cherokee Indian, and we're about to learn some American history that most folks don't even think about. That's coming up next. As we entered the museum, we first encountered exhibits detailing life of prehistoric Indians, those from the Paleo, Archaic, Woodland, and Mississippian eras. As knowledge of plants grew and more vegetation was added to their diets, archaic Indians were able to create a surplus of food without having to cultivate crops. As a result, they took on a more sedentary lifestyle. During the archaic period, one of the more important developments in hunting was the atlatl which increased both the force and the distance that a spear could be thrown. Made from a wooden shaft about two feet long with a hook often carved from a deer antler on one end, the atlatl was used throughout the archaic and into the woodland period. The woodland period represents a high level of adaptation to the environment, with the Indians finding new ways to hunt and grow food. The use of the bow and arrow enabled woodland Indians to hunt a wider range of animals from greater distances and, with a more sedentary lifestyle, pottery manufacturing became widespread. Since pottery was fragile, bulky, and not easy to transport, it is thought that pottery making occurred mainly among Indians living in relatively permanent villages. Pottery with markings impressed upon it with cords and fabric appeared in Upper East Tennessee by 900 BC. The Green Corn Ceremony was a time for forgiveness and great thankfulness for all the blessings bestowed, and a popular time for weddings to occur. Although it was not the only time of year a marriage could be performed, the Green Corn Festival was a popular occasion for a wedding ceremony. With friends and family gathered around, the groom would present a gift of meat to the bride. This symbolized his manhood and his ability to take care of her. The bride would reciprocate by giving her groom an ear of corn, representing Silu, the mother of corn, or a pot containing food she had cooked for him. This represented her womanhood, her ability to take care of her husband. Then the couple would tie their blankets together, literally tying the knot. Since the Indians believed the green corn belonged to the spirit powers, a purification ceremony had to be performed before the corn could be eaten. For the Cherokees and other southeastern tribes, Music was both entertaining and educational. Important tribal events were sung about and reenacted through movement. Children learned about their place in the universe through the songs and dances of their people. 
In the Mississippian period, a new variety of corn with more kernels emerged, called Eastern Flint. Corn combined with beans and squash became known as the Three Sisters. These crops provided the means by which Mississippian Indians were able to increase their population and their leisure time. The game of stickball was taken seriously by all the tribes and played with the same ferocity. Called Anasa or Little Brother to War by the Cherokees, the game was associated with religious rituals and also had strong political overtones. Many of the skills used in warfare were similar to those required to become a good stickball player, including strength, stamina, speed, strategy, mobility, and cunning. Although many of the Cherokee games were competitive, the butter bean game was more of a social pastime for men, women, and children. It was played one-on-one -on -one or by teams. Six split butter beans were placed in a flat basket, then tossed in the air. How they landed in the basket determined the score, which was then tallied with corn kernels. The Cherokee variation of this game was played with a stone or disc instead of a hoop and was called chunky. Normally, the game was played by two men. One man would roll the stone, then two men would cast the poles. If one of the players knocked the chunky stone over, it was an automatic win. If both missed, the player whose pole was the closest to the stone when it was stopped was the winner. The zenith of cultural development in the prehistoric southeast took place during the Mississippian period and was reflected in their pottery. The settled lifestyle of the late woodland and early Mississippian periods allowed more time for refinements in the technique, design, and artistic decoration of pottery. The techniques developed during this time were used for centuries and some are still being used today. This 22-foot-long, authentic, 200-year-old Cherokee dugout canoe was discovered in the Chattahoochee River in North Georgia in 1974. Though the Cherokee used pikes, lances, darts, spears, and clubs, the favorite weapon was a bow and arrow. As you can see in this display, arrow points were fashioned from many different materials, including quartz. In later years, Spaniards marveled at the bows of the Cherokees which were so strong the Spaniards could not pull back the strings. Some of these blades were ceremonial, some were practical. Although many were attached to handles, some were made to not be used without handles. Like the earlier Indians, Mississippian Indians used these blades for many purposes, including hide preparation, meat cutting, and cleaning fish. Logans like these were made from hollowed pieces of cane and were cut to a length of 7 to 9 feet. They were used mostly by boys and young men to kill small game such as squirrels or birds. The Cherokee were known to be accurate with blowguns at distances up to 60 feet. The finest artistic achievement of southeastern Mississippian Indians were effigy bowls and vessels. These vessels were often made in the shape of animals, such as owls, ducks, birds, and frogs. 
human faces and bodies were also a common theme on effigy bowls.